so here we are again uh, in the last lecture we discussed uh, very basics about C++ uh, we just made a simple program a very simple program it's one of the simplest program you can ever make and I hope you must have uh, done something with it you must have played with this program to uh, before listening to this particular lecture so today I'll uh, elaborate upon some of the more interesting things some of the more basic things basically so we will look we will learn about we already learned about alphabets what kind of alphabets are used in C++ language so today we will go a little bit more than that so we'll see what uh, like in, like in a language you from the alphabets you made words you make uh, sentences uh, similarly in C++ you make uh, variables uh, data types and then statements and uh, all such things so there is a one to one correspondence between learning a language learning a computer programming language it's uh, almost about the same thing and since because computers are a it's a parallel form of life this is a physical world and that is a virtual world or a digital world so uh, let us begin with this uh, so we start with the variables what are variables if you if you look at the word variable see whenever you are trying to understand anything as i discussed in the last lecture also you just need to know the meaning of that particular word word so what is a variable a variable which changes variable means it changes all the time so what is a variable it's a it's a it's a symbol uh, it, it's a symbol that represents a memory location in computer's memory now you need to understand this how how do computers uh, work see computers only have a couple of things as uh, most of you are aware it's a it's a binary system usually uh, so it's a zero or one uh, it's, since they are electrical switches so it's either on or off off is zero on is one so the computer only understands zeros and ones everything else is translated uh, or transformed for with some sort of combinations of these zeros and ones make a whole sort of uh, different world the virtual world so uh, it's all about computer's memory like uh, humans have memory so everything is stored in your in your mind in your memory similarly in computers also uh, everything is stored in memory and memories have locations in your mind also there are locations where such things are stored we will deal with memory a little later in the course uh, in a greater detail but presently you can understand that it is a you have a location where the things are written sort of written so what is a very and and these memory locations are uh, are identified by some names which are called variable now if, what is the difference between constant and variable constant will have always a constant value uh, like God is a constant or nature whatever you call you call Allah you call God or you call uh, Bhagwan, whatever whatever you call the or, or you uh, the, any atheist can call a nature so in, the, in nature the, the nature is a constant but uh, we we are the variables uh, the people are variable because different values may be stored at different times at this location now try to understand this in a computer at a particular memory location different values can be stored within the same variable because this variable can take any value provided that particular type of the value is defined for that suppose something is defined as an integer then an integ integral value will be saved there if something is defined as a floating point number then a real value will can be stored but different values may be stored at different times similar to our life different at, at the same location at different times different values are stored today you are in the class in next year somebody else will be in the class I'll be teaching them so which which will have uh, different faces than you different names uh, from you so different values may be stored at different times at that particular location what is the content of the variable at that particular moment memory location is called the value of the variable whatever is 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 uh, stored there that is called the value now what is the meaning of declaring a variable 
you declare to the whole world you are this type of thing so you it's, there is a variable name you you put you declared as a data type uh, what kind of data type is it everything is data for c++ everything every variable is a data it's a number or it's, a, it's a, some sort of number so whether it is an integer type or boolean type or floating point type uh, different kind of variables are there and uh, these two things are necessary to declare a variable and the third uh, thing is optional which is initializer you can give a certain value as an initial value of that particular variable so that is an initializer which is optional you may or may not define this now as just some some simple examples i can say int sum equals 100 so what does that mean sum is a variable which is of type integer and i am initializing a value 100 to this sum i am assigning a value 100 this uh, equals sign means assignment operator this is an assignment operator which means the value of a hundred is assigned to a, a, a variable sum which is of type integer so this is the optional thing i've used i can also say int count count is a variable which will come a little later in the program somewhere so i'm defining it right now which will be of type int so count can only store values which are of integer type similarly my cat this is a variable name defined by me or by you or whatever is defined by the programmer this is of the type character so it has to be a character a single character so care is a uh, my care will always uh, uh, save at their that particular location a character similarly average is a name of a variable which will hold floating point number or the real numbers on that so uh, even if you have more than let's say you have more than one integer variable in your program so you can define it this way int count first number comma second number and then semicolon remember semicolon is an integral part of all the c++ statements so this is a second or you have if you, if you have several character variables you can have char uh, uh, these all all these four variables my char char1 char2 and initial they are all of type character Similarly, height, weight, and average are all of type the real numbers or they can be defined as float. A very, so, if uh, I told you in the last class also that a variable can be declared anywhere in the program, but it must appear before it is used. So, you cannot de define a variable after it is being used. Now, as I told you in the, in the couple of slides back, that the variables correspond to memory locations therefore uh, you can have an input command such as this and remember c out statement with two less than less than signs here c in always carries a greater than sign and so here the the, the meaning of this number is that number one is a is a is a variable which is inputted to the computer so when this statement is executed whatever the characters typed by the user are converted into that data type of number one so if you type let's say if let's say number one is defined as an integer and you type uh, 2.35 then two will be transferred to the computer so so by the you so whatever you type they are converted into the given data type of number one which is placed into memory location at that location which is assigned to this particular variable called number one so whenever there is a new value assigned to number one whatever was written earlier is deleted and a new value is stored there so what does that mean that the new value will always overwrite the previous value stored at that particular place now i told you earlier also that a variable name is any valid identifier for which we did some exercise in the last lecture which is not a keyword a keyword cannot be used as a variable name now other thing can be a constant now that is very easy to understand once you understand the variable easy to understand constants a constant is again like a variable is a location in the memory which is referenced by an identifier or by a name but it cannot be changed it's a constant value so suppose i say const float pi which is pi pi equals 3.14159 so throughout my program this a value will remain constant i cannot write any other value there 
constant int n equals 100 so n will always remain constant const care beep equals slash b so if if i say beep beep is a variable uh, backslash b uh, is is uh, it's, it's uh, i think audible beep or probably either this is a blank space or beep you you have to check the your compiler try it out what does it do uh, now constant again it must be initialized before uh, it, it must be initialized at the time of declaration you cannot like like with the variable i i could have uh, I, I could have a float pi which is a variable if when i add this keyword const const this is a keyword which is always to be added to this particular statement if you are defining a constant and all these four things are necessary const data type name of the variable or name of the sorry constant and its value so it has to be initialized when it is declared so all these four things are necessary in the for the constants one is the keyword const another is a data type which can be any of these or even many other bool also and then the name of the variable name of the constant and the value of that particular constant so remember this uh, this thing uh, always okay next thing comes as input output streams i am uh, just uh, so, so in, in today's lecture basically i am giving you information a lot of information which will be used for your uh, basic programming skills so these are necessary things which are going to be used in all of your programs so you have already uh, experienced the output stream object c out remember we used in our very first program so in in c++ the output on the standard stream and the standard stream is the computer monitor is performed using this uh, c out output stream object it and then it requires io stream file so you have to do hash include io stream if you want to use c out for performing the output how does it work the information is sent to the c out object it is an object using the output operator this is called output operator or the put operator or a stream insertion operator they are all names of this uh, these symbols two uh, uh, less than uh, signs so they are called put operator because you are putting a you are putting a value on the computer monitor or you are you are inserting a stream in the computer monitor or you are outputting the uh, value in the computer monitor so what this operator does it inserts the value of the variable on its right whatever is written on its right into the output stream that is named on its left so presently c out is written on its left so this operator streams that into this object sometimes when you are writing with a file instead of c out you will write that particular file name so there you will outputting things in a file which will be saved now c out does not save anything it will give it will show you everything on the screen uh, but uh, sometimes you need to save things out for your future uses so area is a variable which has a value its value will be outputted or uh, it will, will be inserted into c out and c out is a standard uh, computer monitor uh, now c out can be used in a sort of a cascading uh, way uh, more than one item can be displayed using a single c out object so this end l is end of line so end line number number c out such outputs are called cascaded output operation and it, they always work from uh, uh, left to right first number equals it will be written the number will be written after that whatever is the value this will be written as it is uh, like it will write capital n u n u m b e r blank space equals sign blank space then the value of number here will be given written and then there is a end line it will be equivalent to backslash n character end line it will go to the next line so the c out object displays all the items from left to right as the name stream because it flows like a stream just like a river stream now similar to c out or just opposite to c out is a c in object which is a standard input object as you are outputting your uh, data or uh, outputting your program output to the computer monitor through the c out object similarly if you want to put give some input to the computer uh, maybe through the keyboard 
then you will, you will use see in object so similarly like like see out it also requires a u stream file and the input information is sent to see in using the input operator which is opposite to the output operator it is two greater than signs it is uh, the name another uh, other names for this uh, operator is get operator because the computer is getting the information through this operator or the extraction operator computer is extracting information from you so this get operator or the input operator it takes the value from the object named on its left and places it in the variable on its right so it takes the value from the object named on its left c in is a keyboard so whatever you type on the keyboard it takes the value from here and it puts it on the variable here so if you type two numbers it will, first number will be put in number one second number will be put on number two so we, you, you can also cascade the c in object also more than one item can be displayed using a single c in object so you can write c in number one number two whatever you write at uh, the first place it will be stored as number one and the, after a blank or a comma if you write another number that will be stored as number two now multiple input values from the keyboard must be separated by spaces or enter so either you write in different lines or you separate these uh, different input values by, by spaces now these values need not have the same kind of data types like they do not need they do not have to be all same data types or all same integers they may be one uh, input value may be integer another may be character another may be real number and so on so the multiple values may have different data types now the user input goes from keyboard to the input buffer so whatever you type on the keyboard it goes to the buffer where it is stored as characters now the seeing object converts the data to the type that matches the variable initially it is stored it is stored as characters if you write 23 so it will be stored as 2 and 3 and then seeing will try to understand that uh, what is on my right side it is a number defined as int then this number this 2 and 3 will be converted to 23 and it will be stored as 23 so the, the, the example here is like suppose you have three lines in your program these three lines what what do they do int number it defines a variable called number which is of integer type then you say enter the number within double quote marks so what does it do it writes on your screen enter the number so that you know that you have to write a number otherwise you will not know that's why this statement is useful if you just don't write this statement it, it will say see in number uh, but when the program runs you do not know what to do so here see out will help you to you are uh, writing enter the number so you, you know now you have to enter the number so when you enter the number as let's say 456 so this number will be stored as four five six as characters but scene object will take in that number and look at this okay this number is defined as an integer so this four five six are converted into an integer number which is 456 and that is stored at the computer memory location which is assigned for this particular variable number okay. now spacings are very important and sometimes least important sometimes quite important uh, but we should we, we should know about the spacings how do spacings work in c++ all blank spaces are ignored by the compiler whether you put the spacing or not it doesn't really matter but to, to make it to make a program look meaningful or aesthetically good you need to use spaces so uh, except when it, they are needed to separate the identifier like here int main parenthesis if you just write don't write a space here then intmain will be taken as a name of a function not as a keyword and then this so this is blank spaces are important here but if you leave let's say five blank spaces here it doesn't really matter one blank space and five blank spaces mean the same thing now blank spaces also important here like a, within a, within double quote marks if you have blank spaces here here then they will be written as it is so they are they the blank space is given output if it is a part of a some string here other exceptions are also there like a preprocessor directive where you have this hash uh, signs so all the preprocessor directives must be written in single line other statements can be written in different line like you can write int 
in the next line you can write main and parenthesis it doesn't really matter because computer will ignore all those blank spaces but a preprocessor directives has to be written in a single line similarly if you have a string constant a sequence of characters a string it they are, that also cannot be broken into multiple lines because strings are always written in double quote marks and you cannot have those uh, multiple lines things in now very important thing about in c++ data types one of the most important thing in c in a programming language since all the variables and uh, uh, storage uh, names, stored names, they are considered as data in C++. Everything contains data. Only thing is the data can be of different types. It can be integer, floating point, boolean, character, array or anything. So in C++, each piece of data must be of a specific data type and you need to define it. This data type determines how this data is going to be represented in the computer and the, what kind of processing the computer will be able to do on it. See for each data types there are different kind of uh, uh, operations arithmetic or uh, other operations logical operations can be done on a particular data type. Some, some data type allow some kind of operations some don't. So there are three kinds of uh, data types C++ uh, uh, supports. One is uh, primary data types which uh, we have already discussed uh, mo most of them one is derived data types and the third is user defined data types I can also define my new data types one is the derived data types and basically fundamental data types are the primary data types. what are the primary data types like among the integers the integral types they are all I -N -A int bool cat short long the common thing about these things are they will all be stored as integers in the computer memory. Floating point data types are float, double, long double and so on. They will be stored as a real number or a floating point number. So and what are the derived data types? Derived data types are arrays and pointers which are derived from the all, all these basic uh, data types. We, we will learn about those arrays and pointers a little later in the course and then you have user defined data types one is enumeration type then structures then classes so you will have those things uh, today i may touch upon enumeration type but uh, i would like you to do uh, 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 some self study on this but let's see if i have time i'll so first we take the integral data types what are the integral data types what do they do they represent an integer value what is an integer a whole number without a fractional part everybody knows about it about an, about an integer a c++ has uh, all these data integral data type char is integral data type short int long bool bool has only two values zero or one or true or false short uh, char also has a single uh, uh, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a single location it is saved int has i think about depending on the compiler some somewhere it is it is stores four bytes long may store four bytes short may store two bytes and so on by default all the integral data types are a signed integer that like that means it can have a negative and a positive sign both except the bool data type boolean which has only two values zero and one no sign if you want to make it a data type as unsigned like if you have only suppose you have only positive values in your program then you can say okay unsigned int x then this x will have only positive values it has no sign so all integral data types can be declared as unsigned except the boolean one because it does not have sign at all by default all the data types char short int and long why, why are they find different way because they are designed to represent different sizes of integers some are large integers a large size that means in the memory location you may have more places to be stored so you can store large numbers and some places you can have uh, uh, smaller numbers to be stored you can only have lesser numbers 
Now this is uh, one of the example for maybe if for, for a few computer computers. This may be the size in bytes for different data type, but uh, it differs from computer to computer. Or the, the, some such sometimes the compilers also decide what is the size in bytes for different data types. So they, these values may be different for different machines. But this is just a relative example. Like you have a care which is one byte, unsigned care also have one byte. And minimum value, so you can only store numbers between minus 128 to 127 in a care. Uh, remember, care is a character. You may be thinking that why am, uh, why am I storing numbers here? Because all the characters have a corresponding digit associated with it. And the characters A, B, C, D and capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, all, the, all those characters have corresponding numbers associated with them. So you need, you can store there. Uh, unsigned char will store 0 to 255 value this also have one byte now short have two bytes length uh, can be achieved there and see, see suddenly re, uh, increasing one byte which, which is four bits or eight bits or 16 bit depending on the uh, size on your computer you can store very large numbers and int which is a four byte system four byte uh, where you can store fit for each int in the variable you can have you can store very small to very large number minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1 those kind of numbers you can store long which is double the size of uh, int which it stores even huge uh, numbers in the computer's memory now cap is a character data type it describes data consisting of one a single alphanumeric character either or these uh, special symbols it can uh, store either a letter or a digit or a special symbol like dollar plus minus dash slash backslash all those things all the digits also are stored there so a care type is an integral type because uh, corresponding to each of these uh, these uh, symbols there is a integer associated with it like char c equals capital a if i say in your in my program c out c equals c it will give you a it, because if i have defined c as char so it will give me an output as c but suppose i say c out int c equals int of c that means give me the integral equivalent of c integer value of c so what will it give it will give me 65 because capital a means 65 capital B means 66 capital C means 67 capital D means 68 and so on and then when you finish with these capital letters then the lowercase letters come so so I think capital small a means 90 something whatever you add uh, 26 to uh, 64 so that is 90 so 91 91 will be kept small a 92 will be small b 93 will be small c and so on so all these uh, characters have uh, numbers associated with that or the value. So this value will be stored there when it is read as A because C I have defined as char. And the boolean type, the bool type is again an integral type which consists of just two values which are, which are the constants true and false. These values are stored as integral, these integral are, these integers are 0 and 1. So uh, and so for example, Suppose I say bool flag equals false. I say or so see out flag as flag. So this will give me uh, zero. And if I say flag equals true, this will give me one. So it will it will always give me a, because the number is stored there is not true and false but a zero and one. So it is defined as zero and one. enumeration data type I'll touch upon that but I'll not go into very uh, wide detail uh, for this uh, enumeration data type is a user defined data type as a user I can define my data type where enum is a keyword first of all let us look at the syntax name of the type suppose uh, I, I say we, we learn with example and the syntax syntax is enum type name and the list there in curly brackets or braces and with followed by a semicolon enum is a keyword type name is the identifier with which the, the name with which you are defining that particular uh, data type 
Yeah. And this list is stands for a list of names for integral constants. So for example, we say enum color as red, blue and green. So now the, then we can declare variables of this type. We said this is a new data type. We enumerated that. We say color C1 and C2. So uh, we can use them as simple data types C1 equals equals. Since I have not taught you equals equals yet, so I will not. Uh, this is a equality sign. It's a, it's a compar comparison sign if two values are equal. So since we have not gone into it yet, so I would not like to discuss in enumeration right now. So uh, I think I'll skip uh, enumeration for today. Uh, I'll take forward the, the floating point data type, which is much easier to understand uh, given the the points which I have already discussed in my this series of lectures uh, in, in the last lecture. So enumeration we will see a little later or I will also suggest you can see enumeration type with any of the books and then come back to us if there are any doubts. So what are the floating point data types? So it used to represent floating point numbers and uh, it will be interesting to know what are floating point numbers and why are they called floating point. I will leave that to you but in one of my classes I will discuss that what is why it is called a floating point number. So in C++ what do we do? There are three types of floating point data types. One is flat, float then double and long double. So float is uh, simply a four bit, four four byte system. Then double is an eight byte system, and long double is a ten byte system. Uh, these days, uh, I think some of the machines may have even larger sizes. So it's extended double precision. These are the memory sizes which are already predefined for the for these particular data types. And see how smaller value and how large value can be stored in this float. Float is 3.4 10 to the power minus 38, very small value. But you know, in scientific uh, calculations these days, even smaller values are needed, and even larger values are needed. So sometimes you may, if you are doing astronomical calculations for in astronomy, where you have very large numbers to play with, you need to use a, a variable which may be long double, and where you may deal with very large numbers. 1.1 10 to the power plus 4932 unimaginable but they do exist and sometimes you need those things all and on the other side on a molecular level on a nuclear level on a nucleus level you may have to deal with very small numbers so you need uh, those small masses small distances so you need very uh, very precise uh, floating point variables which uh, may require to be uh, defined as long double. So let's stop here and then we will uh, do that in the next class. Uh, uh, you are also saturated in 30 minutes. I am also tired. So let's do it uh, for the next class. So save for next class. So in the next class we will start uh, learning the arithmetic uh, operators. So and probably you will come to know why C++ is called a C++. So we will also uh, discuss the plus plus operator and uh, several other operators also uh, so that will be for the next class thank you